we're going to factor a cubic polynomial, and by that I mean a polynomial that has a third power here as the leading degree. And we're given a clue about it in that one of the roots is negative 4 plus 2i. Now that's a very important clue because this is a complex root. And if you notice, the polynomial that we're dealing with only has real terms. There's no complex terms in this thing. So that allows, that allows us to use the complex conjugate root theorem, which says if you have a real polynomial with a complex root, then there must exist another root, which is the complex conjugate of the first. This is going to allow us to save a lot of time, because now I know right off the bat two of the roots of this polynomial. Now, because of the fundamental theorem of algebra, okay, and this is a cubic, in other words, a third degree polynomial, there must be three total roots, in other words. It's going to look like this when I factor it out. f of x equals x minus x1, the first root, x minus x2, the second root, and x minus x3, the third root. I don't know what x3 is yet. We're going to figure that out. But I do know x1 and x2. Okay, we've just talked about those. So let me write it this way. It's going to be x minus, and let's put in x1 right here, negative 4 plus 2i and then x minus x2, which is negative 4 minus 2i, the conjugate of the first one. And then we have this x minus x3 thing. I don't know what that is yet, but we'll figure it out. Now, the way I like to do this problem is to avoid all rational roots theorem stuff whenever possible. I have a quadratic right here. If I multiply those two together, I'm going to get a quadratic polynomial. And that means I'll be able to just do some long division and we'll be done with this thing. Well. The way I'm going to multiply these together, you could go term by term, but I, I find this method helpful. Just bear with me for a couple of steps. If I eliminate the parentheses, I'm going to have four, x plus 4 minus 2i and x plus 4 plus 2i, right? We distribute those minus signs. I still have this x minus x3 at the back end there. And now I'm just going to introduce some more parentheses for my own reasons. I'll explain why in a moment, but I'm going to write it like this. I'm going to put x plus 4 in its own little parentheses, and then the minus 2i or the plus 2i is going to go after that. All I've done is rearranged a little parentheses. I haven't actually changed anything in this latest step. Well, notice something. This looks a lot like a minus b times a plus b right here. And if you remember, that's the difference of squares, which means this thing is going to simplify as follows. It's going to be x plus 4 squared minus 2i squared, and then we have x minus x3, okay? Well, that starts to simplify really fast, and I'm going to skip a couple steps here because you've been through this part before. x squared plus 8x plus 16, and then 2i squared, and it's negative, turns into plus 4, okay? x minus x3, and we simplify one more time, and we get this. x squared plus 8x plus 20, that's an irreducible quadratic, and x minus x3. Okay, this is fantastic. This means all I have to do is divide each side by x squared plus 8x plus 20, right? And what's going to be left? x squared plus 8x plus 20. Divide each side. These are going to cross out right here, and I'll have x minus x3, my final factor. So I think it's time for a little long division. First, let's grab f of x. What was that guy? Uh, ugh, complicated. Okay, let me let me see if this will work. Uh, okay, let's just grab this guy and pull it down here. Ah, oh, perfect. I didn't think so. All right, fine. So, what is this thing? It's two x cubed plus thirteen x squared. 2x cubed plus 13x squared. Maybe zip ahead about 10 seconds in the video and I'll have this written out. 16x minus 60 plus 16x minus 60. Okay, I'm dividing that by x squared plus 8x plus 20. Okay, that looks a little scribbly, so let's try that again. x squared plus 8x plus 20. Now, the method that you're going to use for dividing pretty straightforward. We're going to divide the leading terms. Okay, 2x cubed divided by x squared. That's going to give you 2x. And I'm going to keep this 
in an x column, x to the 1 power, because, you know, I'm like that. So 2x times x squared is going to make 2x cubed. 2x times 8x is going to be 16x squared. And 2x times 20 is going to be 40x. And now we put this whole thing in parentheses and subtract. Okay, let's see what we get. Uh, well, those cross out. And I get minus 3x squared. And then, ooh, uh, 16 minus 40, I think it's minus 24x. I'm going to drop this minus 60 down right there. Okay, so we need to do that another time. Let's try orange now. I'm going to divide the leading term by x squared, and I get minus 3. Okay, now we multiply back down. So we get minus 3x squared, uh, minus 24x, and minus 60. Put the whole thing in parentheses, subtract, and everything cancels out now, and I get zero. And that's that's extremely important. If you remember, this right here is called our remainder. And according to the factor theorem, if you have a remainder of zero, you found a factor, which means 2x minus 3 is our last factor right here. This is this guy. Okay, that's this one right there. So let's write this thing in full factored form now. I um, can write it this way. f of x equals the irreducible quadratic that we found using the conjugate root theorem. And then this latest term, this latest factor that we found using long division. Well, that's it. And if you want to know the roots, right, this is factored form. That's one of the things the problem was asking for. The other thing the problem wanted to know was a list of the roots. So I would say it like this x1 equals, I don't remember what this was, negative 4 plus 2i. Negative 4 plus 2i. x2, the conjugate, was negative 4 minus 2i. And x3 is going to be 3 halves, which we got from that last factor.